Joining me now is Michael Gapin. He's head of U.S. Economics at Bank of America. We also have John Porter, chief investment officer and head of equities at Newton Investment Management. Welcome to both of you, uh, to all three, really. I uh, include you in that, Steve. Uh, Michael, just start things off for us. I'm listening to what Steve just said, and it's GDP still growing. You know, inflation still in the range of 2.8 percent by the Fed's measure. Why are we talking about rate cuts still? Well, I think because the idea that economic momentum will be gradually slowing and, and the, Fed will, the Fed will view falling inflation as a sign that their policy may at some point become too tight. So it would be a cutting cycle about following inflation lower. But I think to, to Steve's point, this, this number should give the Fed some additional comfort and be welcome relief. Right? I think it reduces the concern that inflation is reaccelerating. So I think what the number really does is take the risk of hikes off the table. I'm not sure it moves the Fed that much closer to, to cutting in the near term. John, do you agree about that from a market point of view? And I mean, look at the market's reaction, how pleased it is this morning. Yeah, I agree with Michael. I think the, the biggest risk to the market right now is is that the fear of a rate hike rises. And certainly today's report um, largely takes that off the table, at least for now, at least till the next data point. Look, investing is a second derivative game. And as as the charts show that, that Steve walked through, the, there is improvement really across the board. So we're not at the Fed's target level for inflations, but we're headed in that direction. I think that's very positive from an equity market perspective. Steve, do policymakers think inflation is going to go from 2.8? I'm just going to take the PCE estimate for this month. 2.8 to 2 percent on its own without any further uh, restriction? Yes, that's the plan right now, uh, Kelly. That is the... Uh, what do you want to call it? That That is the game plan by the Federal Reserve. They believe that if they exert pressure at this level for a period of time, that they will get the outcome that they think. That's what they think right now. And that's why the April number is important, because it, it sort of it leans against this idea that maybe the Fed was not tight enough. We just had um, uh, Kashkari talking, the uh, Minneapolis Fed president. He was saying, look, maybe what we've discovered is that we don't have two feet on the brake pedal. We've got one foot on the brake pedal. Well, maybe that's enough, maybe not, but we'll see. The idea being, uh, Kelly, if inflation had continued to stay elevated and or keep rising, that would have been further evidence of the Fed not being tight enough. I think April, at least for the moment, for the month, dissuades that. Michael, why do you think May could bring us even better news? Well, I think some of the volatility and in inflation or the upside surprise in inflation in the first quarter was statistical and not real. We're not saying it was all statistical. I do think there's signal in it. Um, but as we move forward, I, you know, I think some of the seasonal factors will, will be more important. But just, I think just more importantly, as Steve is mentioning, monetary policy is tight on the margin. We can debate how tight and how restrictive, and the economy is receiving a positive supply shock from a rebound in the labor force. Both of those, I think, in a baseline sense, keeps inflation moving, moving lower. You know, we think the translation of the PPI and the CPI data this week into core PCE at the end of this month could bring us a 0.23. Uh, so, again, a directionally improvement, not where the Fed ultimately wants it to be, but on the margin, more improvement as we go forward. And then I would say beyond May, though, Kelly, looking further out, at some point, we do think shelter inflation will take a step down. When that does, it'll be very important, given its large weight in inflation, it can offset a lot of bad outcomes elsewhere. So I think the timing of the cuts hey, probably Mike. more about when services, when services inflation comes down. Yes, Steve, sorry. Yeah, okay, let me just do a little quick reporting here. What happens to your year over year on core PCE? Does it come down? For uh, no, I think we're right on the edge of that two eight, as Kelly was saying in the in the, or, so as you were saying in the introduction. I, I think yeah, I think we're gonna be close to that two eight. And in fact I think the sideways kind of on the year on year rate of core PCE is what we're looking at for, for quite some time. John Porter, let me turn to yeah, you. So that's not gonna yeah, yeah. Steve, go ahead. Finish the thought. I was just going to say, I don't think, I don't know that that's going to, going to hearten the Fed and, and and move them more towards cutting if the, if it remains the year over year at two eight, little improvement on the month over month. Uh, but that's what people are going to look at, I think, Kelly. Sorry to interrupt. No, I. I